Howdy. How's it going? <laughs> Welcome to... <laughs> that was the weirdest intro. Very uh, mellow. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long day. We've actually, <laughs> for the record, we have been recording these last few episodes in quick succession. So if you wonder so, why Wayne is flagging, then... And this is the last one of the day, so my energy is kind of like... And I'm trying to... So please do bear with me. <laughs> please do bear with me. I will try my best. This is the first time we've done this many episodes in one day. It's a record, actually. It is a record. So we're We'll proud. see how it goes. <laughs> Great. Anyway. So, enough about that. Uh, I am Wayne Ingram. I am Jemmy Ordis. And we are the Powerful Nonsense crew. And today... Actually, it kind of feels quite apt, given my energy right now. <laughs> uh, we're talking about what to do when you're stuck in a rut mm-hmm. with no ice. Sorry. Darkness. Darkness. Oh, okay. Reference. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I used to like the darkness. I loved the darkness. They were great. What happened to them? Well, well, no, let's not go Let's not that. go there. Drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> it happens. Basically. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. So, what to do when you're stuck in a rut. Um, often... I think we have so many expectations of ourselves and what we want from life and often it doesn't play out that way and then sometimes we kind of get bogged down with life and all this other stuff that happens. Yeah, I think it's really common to hear from people that they just feel like they're not going anywhere, everything feels rather stagnant, mm. everybody around them seems to be doing a lot better and they just feel like, ugh, why me? <laughs> and so yeah. I think it's a good place that we oh well, I just think it's really important that we can talk about this because mm-hmm. I think a lot of the time it is a lot of it is down to beliefs. Yeah. I think a lot of um there's a lot yeah. of social pressures out there nowadays. Oh, big time. We're definitely exposed I to I think even more so now. Than yeah, definitely. Ever definitely. Before. I think we're so exposed to everybody else's life that it's quick it's very easy for us to judge or kind of create this illusion of how we think everybody else is it. It's kind of that idea of that whole FOMO, isn't it? It's that yeah. kind of seeing what everyone else is doing. You're seeing these highlight reels of everybody else's life. And so you start to kind of gauge where you are and you start to say, well, I am coming to my late 20s now. I'm All right, jeez. <laughs> I'm just giving an example. Could you, could you not pick one that was so close to home? Well, that's a good thing because I think it's a good place to start because actually <laughs> if we can tell ourselves <laughs> why, we, why we can get into a rut and then we can obviously help you guys on how to get out of it. Do you know what? One of my one of my biggest talking of this, one of my biggest things, and it's a really bad habit and I really need to stop doing it, right? But when I see some actor having some level of success, right? Some not not someone I know, either this is just some actor that's had some level of success. One of the first things I do is so bad. One of the first things I do is I hop troll on, him. You troll him. No, no, I hop on IMDB. Yeah. And I find out how old they are. Mm-hmm. I have to know how old they are. Why? Just so that I can go, oh, it's okay. I've got like another 15 years before I, that's where I should be. It's so bad. So the first thing you it's do is so actually bad. compare. Yeah. Which it's, is... it's so, And I know I'm doing it. And it's so bad. And I hate the fact that I feel the need to do it. But I think as I know that I'm kind of... Because I'm getting to the point where I'm going, actually, me and my friend were almost crying down the phone <laughs> to each other. when we. Cause my friend went, oh, yeah. And she's like, she's like, you know quite old like she's like in her 40s i'm like that's like less than 15 years away for us you do realize and she was like no it's not i'm like yes it is like in 13 years i will be 40 and i think that's really starting to like i had it the other day as well i thought thought the same thing i thought shit i'm really not far from like 40 45 i'm i'm closer now to 45 than i was than i am to being newly born than you were yesterday (laughs) all right yeah and that as well (laughs) So I think, you know, and I think I do, I do feel that pressure and yeah. I think everybody feels that pressure um, of kind of going, well, am I where I should be? Mm-hmm. I think that's a that's a really dangerous way to think, because I think often it is these sort of time aspects to our lives that we obviously mm. try to say, well, at this point, I should hit this at that point, I should be here. Mm-hmm. And obviously creative pursuits and acting. And obviously when you're doing these sort of things it's like, well, when is the break coming when do I start doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing? And I think it's such a dangerous mindset to be Completely. in. I think it... For many it, reasons. It strips you of power, really. It strips you of feeling like... It just worries you. Like you say, I'm sure there's no benefit to you going on there IMDb. Absolutely apart from no benefit because, quite frankly, their age is the most minuscule variable to mm-hmm. their success. Mm-hmm. It's, it adds nothing. 
I know, but I guess because of that reason that you time, time is obviously the thing that's moving. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, well, if he is 10 years ahead of me or, or older than me, then I've still got time and it's still an opportunity. Mm-hmm. I guess that's sort of where you probably gain some yeah, power maybe. from. Maybe I'm going, maybe it's a way of trying to take the pressure off of myself. Yeah. Probably more than it is about actually comparing. Uh-huh. But then in that itself, does that not then just encourage procrastination? Because I'm going, I'm going, shit, I'm not, I'm not there. And I really want to be there. And then I go, shit, I feel so bad. How old is he? Oh, it's all right. He's 42, so it's fine. I've got time. I've, I've got, got time. time. Yeah. And so then rather than being like, I really want to be there, I kind of go, well, just wait. Yeah. You're not there yet. So, yeah, maybe that encourages procrastination. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I think um, I want to start with one thing that I think is the probably like the first thing anybody should do who feels like they're stuck in a rut because I do think a lot of it comes down to beliefs. It comes down to your own perspective. And I think one thing that a lot of people don't do or get these blind spots that occur is because they lack gratitude. Mm. I think often the time, like you say, is Mm -hmm. you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, which means you aren't being currently grateful for where you're currently at. So I always find that you get so energized when you could appreciate how far you've already come. Mm -hmm. It's like you kind of, I think um, Daniel Priest said in his seminar, it was kind of like this idea that there's two mountains and you've already got to the top of the mountain. But then once you're at the top of that mountain, you're visualizing that mountain ahead of you in the distance that looks even bigger. And so you forgot that you're already on a mountain. Yeah. And I think that for a lot of people, entrepreneurs, anybody really, is that idea that if you're if you show gratitude for where you're at, so for you in that moment where you find see an actor being successful, actually in that moment you could show gratitude to yourself that actually I'm still pursuing my dream. Mm-hmm. You could show gratitude that do you know what? I was in that short film last week and it's actually gonna be in a um it's gonna be shown at the London Film Awards. Yeah. And or maybe yeah. you or maybe <laughs> or maybe you go back to that um email that you got from an agent or somebody or a director who said you know you did a great role and you were excellent in this or then you go back to a friend who's given you a compliment of how good you were in that role Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of the time it's easy to kind of we want these little success cues people to kind of prep us up and say oh yeah you did well but I think we like them and they they last a very a few minutes and then suddenly I need more now where's the next fix and I think gratitude even just to say you're healthy I'm healthy enough to be an actor I mean in a country that has the opportunity for me to pursue this thing Mm -hmm. i'm happy that yeah i have my health i think there's so many things to be grateful for and i think when you're stuck in a rut it's often that you've kind of made those things that seem pretty mundane you've become oblivious to them but i think sometimes being aware of them gives you a lot of energy and actually helps you to put things into a new perspective that energizes you and Mm. even when i mention those things to you i could see you and oh yeah actually and i think sometimes that's exactly what people need is to be grateful of the, the current moment, the current yeah. position they're in. And I think that, I mean, using the, the film as an example, like I was so ecstatic when I found out that A, it was being entered to films. I was so ecstatic when I found out it had been shortlisted. But that was like three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it's like, it has become normal. It's normalised. Yeah. The fact that I've got this film that I'm really, really fucking proud of that's going to be screened at an independent film festival in mm-hmm. London, in a cinema. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now I'm kind of like, well, yeah, that's that's done now. That's been achieved. Yeah. What's the next yeah, thing? Yeah, what's next? But I think also on the flip side, I think when people get stuck in a rut, that's when they start really focusing on the negatives of the why I can't and why it won't happen and, and what's the obstacle. It's highlighting those rather than highlighting the leverage that you've already got, as you say, from what you've already achieved. Mm-hmm. And I think when you get stuck in that rut, it's like, well... With anything, I think, you know, well, you know, my circle of friends isn't as big as I'd like it to be, but I haven't got the money to go out and meet new people. Um, But then you then have to look at the opportunities that Mm -hmm. are, okay, well, okay, you might not have much money, but what can you go out and do that's not going to cost you anything, Uh as an example? Um, In in fact, one thing that um, Michael Hyatt has brought up on his podcast before, and I think this is such a good sort of mantra to have i think with anything it's not so much a mantra but basically whenever he finds himself not necessarily stuck in a rut but in a position of real frustration or something's not gone right um he has trained himself to ask himself the question of uh what what does this seemingly negative thing what opportunities does this create Uh um whether that is just simply it gives me the opportunity to be more grateful for what has gone well in the past. 
it gives me the opportunity to be grateful for the fact that, okay, I might not have a big circle of friends, but my circle of friends is fucking great Mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, I think I think it's a great way to look at it. And I think it's those questions, I think, open up clarity. I think sometimes the fact that you're in a rut is sometimes a message that is coming towards you. Mm -hmm. It is saying that, you know what, you haven't pushed yourself. You haven't Mm -hmm. grown. You're doing the same stuff. You aren't learning. You haven't. Uh made time for your friends and sometimes the rut is there to actually kick you up the arse it's not always a bad thing no. because it's uncomfortable because it wants you to make change like there's something in your life that obviously you've become you're kind of oblivious to or maybe there's aspects of your being that you aren't embracing and so that rut is actually you being uncomfortable so that it actually forces you to go mm-hmm. do something that makes you uncomfortable because mm-hmm. a lot of the time it is people say you're stuck in a rut and you kind of identify that with being stuck in a routine doing the yeah. same thing yeah. just the same day rehearsing over and over and obviously we know that humans like diversity in life. Mm-hmm. And so that's another way of looking actually as an opportunity by asking those questions to actually know how to kind of maybe move mm-hmm. forward or make a, a change in your life. Mm-hmm. And if you ask yourself that question, right, and you still come to the conclusion that actually it's all shit or it's not going <laughs> to get any better. Um, if you genuinely think that that's the case, I'd actually so recommend just choosing to just... And, and you've got to be careful when you do it that you're not just self-destructive, but shake your life up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Really shake your life up a little, a little bit. If it means that, okay, I'm going to move house because a new environment. I mean, when I first moved into the place that I live in now, like, my, my God, I was on fire for like two months. I was probably the most productive I think I've ever been mm-hmm. in two months because I was like, right, this is a fresh start. Let's just get down to business. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that does fade over time unless mm-hmm. you find ways to, you know, keep things fresh. Yeah, I think another important aspect of the rut is really being around people as well who are going to kind of help you get out of it. Because I think sometimes, like you say, it's very... It makes sense to ask yourself those questions. Mm-hmm. But often you don't want to ask yourself those questions or you're not in the mood to answer. And it kind of, oh, it just seems a bit woo-woo. But I think one of the most important things as well, I think when a lot of us, even me or you or friendships or even at home with my family, when someone in our family is not feeling so good about something, it's like communicate, like tell yeah. me what the problem is. Because I think sometimes, like we say, you get so stuck in your own head about what the problem is oh, or your own time. belief systems big or your time. own perspective. Big and it time. isn't until somebody else externally lets you know it from a different lens. It's kind of like choosing which lens you want to view the problem at. And sometimes somebody else sees it as, a, like you say, like a great opportunity that you're in this rut. Or maybe, yeah, your job is uh, boring, but that's great. That means you can kind of start looking in the evenings at jobs that are available. Or maybe you mm-hmm. can start working on that little side business you want. And so I do think like a really important part of being in a rut is actually being around people who who want to help you, your friends, who want to support you. If you don't have that available, put yourself into environments like meetups or events and stuff where you know you're going to be around people who are trying to develop themselves. Mm-hmm. That means you're going to be around positive people. Yeah. Oh, I definitely. I think actually one of the best things, when when I kind of attribute, when I look back, uh, when I've been kind of in a rut or I've kind of been like, oh, life's not really going anywhere, it's kind of stagnant. Um, and then I look at one of, you know, the catalyst for how things changed more often than not it's usually when i've met a new person and that new person has brought in some sort of opportunity whether that's some opportunity to meet someone else whether that's an opportunity that they've connected me to someone else or they've got an idea for how i can move things forward or even if it's just I meet that new person, have a damn good time, and it picks me up for the week. Exactly. I think that is a really important part of it. Yeah. And I, and I, yeah, when I look back at everything, and I'm like, yeah, most, I'd probably say 80% of times, it's been down to meeting someone else. And so make yourself willing and open to new experiences, basically, I think, just to kind of, re- not reassess, but it gives you that impetus to kind of just change your frame of mind even if only temporarily Mm -hmm. just for like a day or two because then you start looking at things in a different light because you're you're bringing that new experience and thus that new perspective into what you're doing we need to take a break yes we do so we will we'll be back in a moment we need to thank our sponsor the university of northampton these guys have been great to us and great to you because them sponsoring us means we can continue doing this, right? Yep. Right? So, uh, the University of Northampton uh, specialise in social enterprise. 
So they're all about degrees, obviously, because that's what unions do. But they're also very, very interested in getting their graduates to set up businesses, particularly in the social enterprise space, which is all about business doing social good. So if you're thinking, yeah, I want a degree, but I also want to set up my own business, then I highly recommend, we highly recommend, as alumni, that you check them out. So head over to northampton.ac.uk. All the information is there. And we'd like to thank them very much for their support of the show. So guys, this is super cool. It is. This I'm is quite exciting. super cool. So we're going to talk briefly about New Media Europe. Ooh. New Media Expo coming to London. And guess who's going? Dylan freaking Miller. We are. Oh. Well, Dan Miller as well. Dan Miller Dan as Miller's well. Dan Miller's going to be there as well. <laughs> See, I thought you were going for the Dan Miller thing. But, I mean, we're going as well, which is equally cool. Can I say more cool? Dan mm. Miller's not listening. <laughs> oh, God. But Dan Miller actually is one of the first podcasters I listen to in this sort of space. Me too. So I'm really excited. Uh, but, yeah, we're going. We're going to be there on a panel. Mm. And many... I think we're allowed to say that, right? I think so. Well, if we weren't allowed to say it, we're sorry. But we're <laughs> we're going to be, be on the panel. We're going to be there uh, making the powerful nonsense presence felt. I'm so excited. It's going to be great. But we want you to come. We want you to come. Please join please. us. Uh, so if you want to get some tickets. Oh, also, hang on. Should we just Let tell them what it's about? Tell what it's about. Because no, I missed that. <laughs> we'll get to tickets in a minute. Or maybe it's just enough to sell it that we're going. <laughs> we're going. Well, that's what <laughs> I was kind of assuming. No, no. So... If you don't know what New Media Expo is, it's basically like the hub, the big conference of all like the media creators, like YouTubers, podcasters, um, digital all coming together. media innovators using technology in right. amazing ways. Exactly. So it's all about that production of content in this new media world that we live in where social media is everywhere. Everyone's on social media. Everyone's got a blog or a vlog or a podcast and, and kind of it's all that gathering of people getting some great great value on how that you how you can develop your uh, passions through your business media. whether you're an entrepreneur absolutely so yeah i mean it's it's so good it's gonna be so good <laughs> i'm so excited um so if it sounds like something that you think you might want to come along to if you're looking to enter into youtube podcasting anything like that we can, we can, we can get to get they're still available. So if you want them, you can head on over to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. Yes, we'll put it on the screen. Oh, right, right. <laughs> NM November. Mother. Mother. Echo. Is it mother? Echo. Umbrella. That'll do. <laughs> it's Mike. It's Mike. Mike. November Mike Echo. Uniform. Uniform. Powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. All ticket information's there. And buy your tickets there. It's going to be so good. I'm and just, so excited. As well, just to think about a networking opportunity that's going to be available there. There's mm -hmm. going to be so many people, so many people in the same who are like-minded like yep. us, who are creative people. So I think it's a great opportunity and we'd love you to join us. And also, there's actually an early bird offer going on now so you can actually get your tickets discounted to get in there fast. Yes, well said, Jim. Well said. Talking about new media? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right, back to the show. Welcome back. Hello. So we're talking about what to do when you're stuck in a rut. Mm -hmm. We've talked about, I think, a lot of why people might get stuck in a rut, I think. So let's talk about some maybe often counterintuitive things, I think, that you could do. Such as? Well, I say counterintuitive. Maybe that was the wrong <laughs> the wrong phrase. But um, diet, for example. See, I... Right? To me, I think some people might be like, okay... Right, I understand eating well is good for me and it's going to keep the be the belly fat in shape. <laughs> but, you know, that's not really going to help me with my situation of the fact that, you know, I've just lost my job. Mm -hmm. So like a rut would be for that person, all right, I'm unemployed, haven't got anything right. to do. So why should I, why is, why is eating well going to make a difference? That's why I meant about counterintuitive. So maybe yeah. less obvious. Yeah, I think it's less obvious because I think all of these things are like a whole holistic thing. I think everything goes into each other and i think when it comes to diet i think it's so important we know that that's what makes the chemicals in our body to make us feel good if we mm -hmm. eat and well then suddenly we we are more energetic we feel like we want to go out and socialize we feel awake we feel we have energy i think a lot of the time a rut is actually 
in some ways a, a form of self you've self sabotage yourself and i think because you're in that rut i think it's i mean it's a lot harder it's kind of like not to, i don't want to go into depression but it's this idea of kind of shutting down and conserving if i'm in a rut i don't want to do anything more it's already shit and i don't want to add more problems to the situation i think sometimes having that willpower to think okay i'm going to get obviously people say get out and exercise get out and move get energy in your body get food good healthy food into your system you're going to feel so much better and you're actually going to have that that the energy to actually go out there and meet other people Mm -hmm. to actually have those conversations i think yeah right is so important being in a rut it's so important to shatter that current reality in Mm -hmm. in whatever way that is and maybe you found yourself eating loads of junk all the time so what would happen if you did start eating healthily suddenly you've changed your current reality a little bit and this mm-hmm. might mean oh i feel healthier maybe i should start reading oh i've started reading maybe i should go out suddenly you go out and you socialize and i think it's like a snowball effect that each one starts to help ev- other, every other aspect really yeah and actually i mean i've said to you many times i've started to find this is as i'm starting to experiment with certain aspects of my life because uh, i've never been one for diets i've never been one for for healthy eating i my viewpoint was always like well I'm going to die at some point anyway. I may just, you know... Speed up the process. Just Yeah, speed up the process. No. Uh, but <laughs> as in, like, just enjoy what I eat and whatever. And and that was always my mindset. And as I've tried to experiment with more aspects of my life, I've experimented with my sleep. I've experimented with, you know, trying to make myself as productive as possible and making sure that I don't burn out again and all that sort of stuff. And eventually all these aspects, all these varying aspects all kind of go, well, actually, if you just tweak that just slightly, that aspect's going to improve. And if you just tweak that, that aspect's going to improve. So as you say, it's that kind of holistic, it's like this web of, okay, yeah, you want to get better sleep. Okay, well, don't eat after a certain time. Mm -hmm. And then you start going, okay, well, then what should I eat (laughs) at certain times? And, And so then it all starts to merge into this one, as you say, holistic thing. Yeah, and I think if you kind of break down your rut situation that you might find yourself in, you'll find that there are so many self-sabotaging behaviours mm-hmm. around it that have created the rut. Yeah. And it is because usually those rut habits or those habits that are bringing you down are are those sort of things that are really depleting. So mm-hmm. bad food makes you feel crap. If you're just spending your time in front of the TV, then you're just bombarded by the news that tells you how bad the world is. If you don't go out, you don't socialise, you don't have those emotional nutrients of meeting new people and being friendly and sharing who you are and the other person coming into your world it means you just kind of block off everything that is yeah. we know 100 percent is and we've spoke about well when we interviewed guy winch on the whole um yeah having these emotional nutrients in our life these are things that build us up and i think what people will find when they're in a rut is that they've actually neglected a lot of these things yeah yeah definitely um so yeah i mean obviously there's there's the eating thing eat well that will energize you Exercise, exercise and meditation, I think, are so key, really. I think um, exercise does really energise you. I know as much as I hate going for a run, I really hate... Well, in fact, we play tennis regularly. And I'm, although, okay, yeah, <laughs> at the beginning, it it's to like lunchtime and I'm like, shit, I haven't done anything today. But then for that rest of the day, mm-hmm. I'm really energized to kind of move things forward. And if nothing else as well, I get to lunchtime, I'm like, okay, I haven't done much work. But my God, that feels like I've achieved so much today just because I know that I'm going to be in a better shape for today and the next day and the next day. Yeah, it's always that kind of that mindset you come into as you start. It's like, oh, tennis, running around, it's going to be exhausting, tired. And I know every single time we stop playing tennis, it's like everybody's alive, everybody's awake, and mm-hmm. everybody feels really good that they've actually gone and put that time into themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, yeah, look at the exercise. I think meditation, I don't meditate as much as I'd like. Mm. I really don't. But when I do, again, it's one of those things. And I think with a lot of these things, you go, yeah, but, mm, yeah, well, mm, I don't know if it's going to really help. Just try it. Just try it and see. If it doesn't help, then it doesn't help. But most of these, I reckon, you will feel the difference. Yeah, I think as well, especially sort of mindfulness meditation, is this idea that I think a lot of the time when you are in a rut, it is, like we said at the beginning, is that visual perspective of where you are in life. Maybe you're looking back at the past of how everything you've done was rubbish and you wish you'd done things differently. Or maybe you're looking into the future and say, well, I, I want to be here and I'm so far away. It feels miles away. And I think that's where meditation comes in because it lets you be present. It helps you to see, mm. it see it to see, to stop identifying yourself with the fault 
and understand that actually it's just a thought that's coming into your head. Like these thoughts are always popping in, but it's not the truth. And I think that's where gratitude kind of plays in. It helps yeah. you to see clearly. Meditation helps you to separate, to stop identifying with the thought. And the thought is not always right. It's just always there. Mm-hmm. Like they say, like all those thoughts or fears that you have, like how many of them actually come to fruition and actually cause problems in your life? Very few. It's just that we're great at imagining the worst yeah. case scenario. Yeah, big time. Um, yeah, and it's interesting what you're saying about um, focusing on the past and focusing on the future. Um, and I think actually most of people getting stuck in a rut and, you know, I'm really bad for this. But it's so much in the head. It's mm-hmm. so much in the head. Mm-hmm. Um, you start bringing in uh, baggage from previous scenarios um, and applying that to the current scenario. And also you're going, well, if that baggage is applicable now, it's also going to be applicable five, ten years in the future. So is this really anything that I should bother trying to achieve? Um, and I think you need to let go of what's come before. Um, and I think you also need to let go of what your future might hold. Um, cause I think there's so much, we put so much weight as a society into, um, you should achieve this by this age. Um, you hear of, well, I know girls I know always go on about the fact that, you know, they're in their late twenties and people are asking them when they're going to settle down. Mm. It's like, that's not your decision to make just because I'm in my late 20s. Like, I'll settle down when I want, thanks thanks Mm -hmm. very much. And stuff like that. And I think we're so, we put so much weight on uh, the various seasons of life and what we should have achieved and how we should have achieved them and when by. Um, I think just don't worry too much about that. Just, it's all about being in the present moment. And actually one of the things that really, that Steve Jobs always said, uh, was that he used to look in the mirror every morning and say to himself, if today is the last day that I'm going to be here, would I do what I'm about to do today? And if the answer was no too many times in a row, then he knew that something had to change. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so powerful to kind of put yourself into that scenario of going, okay, if this was my last day, is this how I choose to spend it? Mm-hmm. And okay, sometimes you have obligations and that's fe- that's fine. But also know that your life isn't beholden to what everyone expects of you. The only person that should expect anything from you is you. Mm-hmm. And I think as well, like we say, yeah, it's you, you, you. I think a lot of the time, a lot of this rut is self-indulgent. Mm-hmm. It's you're so focused on you, our oh, poor little you. It's like... Um, Zig Ziglar said, or yeah, or Jim Rohn says, like the plum effect, the poor little old me. And I think that's where you get in a rut where you think, oh, everything's so bad for me. I think sometimes actually is to actually help other people. I think volunteering, I think is so underutilized to actually go out of your way to do something on behalf of somebody else where it's not about you. It's not about forwarding your career. It's not about, oh, what do I get out of this? I think so much people don't realize how much actually put in the perspective on the other person, this is all for you, this is, you do get benefits out of volunteering, but at the same time, I think it gets you out of your head of always thinking about, oh, um, my situation's so bad, because often, often maybe it's volunteering, you might be doing it with the homeless, you might be doing it with young people, you might be doing it with whoever it may be, but that again becomes that new perspective where you think, it, it feels really empowering to not only help people, but actually to see a new perspective. If it's an old person, like you say, um, I mean, Steve Jobs has got the quote about being aware of death, Mm-hmm. as well so what if you go and volunteer and you're doing help helping a lot of old people this helps you become aware of where they're at in life and also maybe give you a new perspective oh oh my god i'm so well, grateful that i'm at this age where opportunity is still available to me gary vaynerchuk always goes on about how he used to in his 20s spend time with people in their 90s and he used to be very deliberate about that fact because he wanted to know how they'd achieved what they achieved Um, what went right what what went went wrong what went wrong what they regretted and he always talks about regret and he always says look do not regret not pushing harder do not regret he's like when he speak when he used to speak to these elderly people it was never oh you know i wish i'd spent more time at my job or you know stuff like that it would always be i wish i'd spent more time with my family i wish i'd um you know pursued more of what i wanted to pursue um and think about that and like 
one of our really, really early episodes, in fact, it might even be episode one, mm-hmm. we talked about uh, rocking chair goal setting. Mm-hmm. And this idea of when you're sat in your rocking chair and you're old and you're talking to your grandkids and telling them what you've achieved and how you spent your life and any advice you'd give to them, like, what would you want that to be? Would you want it to be what you're stuck in a rut about? Probably not. So use that as impetus to make the decisions to try and try and get yourself out of it good stuff i think that's a nice place to end it i think so so yeah a little bit more of a somber episode i think this one it felt a bit somber maybe it's just because i'm tired i don't know (laughs) um but yeah so um yeah i don't i don't really have anything else to add i don't think there is i just think if you're in a rut just kind of check those boxes are you doing all these things we've mentioned are you being uh, grateful are you are you exercising? Are you eating well? Are you socialising? Are you trying new things? Are you are you giving your time to other people? And I think when you look at it, you'll be like, wow, I've become so self-involved and it's all mm-hmm. about me. And and sometimes it, you do need to be about you sometimes because then you look after your health. But at the same time, it's just, I think if you look at it, if you take that... Wider perspective, wider, take yourself yeah. out of the situation. Yeah, and look back and you'll it'll become really obvious. It's why friends are so important because they yeah. will just reflect back to you what you're currently missing. Yeah, definitely. So thanks very much, guys. Uh, I hope that's been valuable to anybody that is stuck in a rut and just giving you guys some food for thought and also reference it later if you do find yourself stuck in a rut. I certainly will. (laughs) Yeah, me too. I should listen to my own advice more, geez. Uh, So, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in, guys. Please uh, leave a comment on YouTube, leave a review on iTunes. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Hit the subscribe buttons on YouTube and iTunes. And, yeah, just generally... Hit us up as well. Cool. We'll catch you next time. See you later.